Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, the video is a little bit different today because we have a little bit different of a product to look at. It's still a model kit. In fact, it's probably the most classic Star Trek model kit there is. Maybe the most classic sci-fi model kit there's ever been. This is the USS Enterprise Starship model kit from Star Trek. It is absolutely a classic. Uh, they started making this around 1966 and it's really been in production ever since. Now this isn't really the original original. Uh, when they first made these, the tooling and the molds were made out of aluminum and those with the popularity of the kit wore out. So around 1975, they had to redo the tooling, redo the molds and kind of redo the model. Uh, so this plastic, this tooling really dates back till 1975. Now the artwork, the artwork dates back to 1968. So this is no longer a still from the TV show like the first box. Uh, this is a painted and built model kit and then a globe of the earth. So this is probably one of the more famous pictures that have been on the box of the classic USS Enterprise. So wonderful artwork, classic artwork, and a classic model kit. Now this model kit really was in production almost continuously from the 1960s to the late 1990s. In the late 1990s, they made the cutaway version of the U.S. Enterprise, and this one went out of production. Uh, round two in the early 2000s, bought up all the molds and the rights to Star Trek model kits, and they've put this into production a couple of times since. So really, this model kit has had a very, very long life. Now, the fact that it's a vintage kit and an old kit honestly means it's not the greatest kit. Now, as much as we love this kit, it's been surpassed three times. First, the cutaway version uh, fixed a lot of the inaccuracies of this model kit. And in the late 1990s, people would buy um, the cutaway and buy extra parts to make it a fully closed version so they could have an accurate version of the TOS Enterprise. And then Polar Lights in the early 2000s came out with this. This is the 1 1,000th scale USS Enterprise model kit. And this model kit is absolutely fantastic. It fixed all of the inaccuracies. It gave you wonderful decals for all of the windows, and it gave you options to build it as it was seen in the show, or the pilot, or the unaired pilot, the cage. And this, after 35 years of building Star Trek models, was the model that the public had always wanted. Really well done, super accurate, and you finally had a model kit that you didn't have to buy extra parts for to get a show accurate ship. In the past 10 years, Polar Lights in round two has put out probably the epitome of the classic USS Enterprise in the 1 3 of scale classic Enterprise. It's about 32 inches long. It has clear parts for all of the windows. You can get extra parts for it to build it in any of those three styles. And it's really the model kit you can buy to make the best Enterprise possible with lights, with movable, with moving Bessard cell caps. It, it really is the best USS Enterprise you could buy. So if we have so many better versions of the USS Enterprise, why are we still buying this one? There really are some reasons to it. There's a reason why this is still on the market. There's a reason why we still buy it, build it, and paint it. And you know, it kind of reminds me of this Optimus Prime. Now this Optimus Prime is better than the G1 version of Optimus Prime from 1984 in every way. It's more articulate, it's better detailed, it has a better transformation, it looks better both as robot and truck. Uh, but still, Hasbro puts out that G1 Optimus Prime every couple of years and it sells out every single time. The reason we like that G1 Optimus Prime, the reason we like this model kit, is this is the model kit we built when we were kids. When I was a kid, I built probably five Star Trek model kits. This was one of them. The other was the Enterprise D, and the other ones were the adversary pack that had the Ferengi ship, the Klingon Bird of Prey, and the Romulan Warbird. Uh, but I, like so many of you, built this model kit. And it was a part of my childhood. It was a part of my history building models. And to get another chance to build this, it's honestly going back to your childhood and doing something better. 
that's one of the biggest reasons people buy this model kit. So you can actually work on something you did decades ago and see what you can make of it now. Uh, for a lot of us, this kit is a victory lap. It takes what you did as a kid, and now that you can do this model kit with a better paint job, you know how to work the decals, uh, you know how to use an airbrush, you know how to glue and sand and putty, you can make this model kit into what you always wanted it to be when you were building it as a kid. And let's not, let's not ignore the fact that nostalgia plays a large part of this hobby and building these sci-fi kits from the properties that we've loved all of our lives. So it's great to take something that you had years ago and finally make it right. I think a lot of us look at maybe old models you've done, you'd love to get another chance at it, and this is that chance. Now, along those lines, I have seen people really trick out this model kit. I've seen them buy resin upgrades. Now they buy 3D printed upgrades for this to replace the bridge and BC deck, uh, to replace the deflector housing, to put on clear end caps for the nacelles. And I see people take what they built as a kid just by gluing together, maybe spray paint or maybe just decaling it. I see them make it into something that is worthy of having been on the show, worthy of being put on your shelves. So a lot of people will buy this and build it uh, to redo something better than they've done before. The other real reason to buy this kit is this is a part of modeling history. So this is the kit that people were building 30, 40 years ago. Uh, this is, if you run into a fellow model builder who has been building Star Trek models for a long time, you've both probably built this kit. You've probably loved the same parts of it. You've probably been frustrated by the same parts of it. The people who have worked on Star Trek themselves have built this kit. Uh, famously, Doug Drexler uh, has pictures of himself building this model kit when he was young, and then he went on to build uh, Star Trek sh ships for the shows and for the movies. So we can't ignore that this is just a part of our shared collective model history. Um, so really a very, very classic kit. And yeah, you know, honestly, if you're looking for a real quick weekend project where you get an enterprise you can be really happy with without too much work, that's the one 1000 scale USS Enterprise. If you want to spend months building the best enterprise possible, that's the one 350th scale enterprise. And then you have this one somewhere in the middle, as far as size, where you're going to build it, you're going to put in about medium the effort, and you'll get something that looks classic, you can get something that looks good, um, and something you can enjoy building, but it probably won't look as good as those other model kits. All right, let's take a look at that box art. So of course we know we cross the front, we have that wonderfully classic shot of the model kit. On the back, we have some new pictures here. This is of course the painted version of the model kit built up very nicely. It is 18 inches long. So that is a wonderful reason to buy this kit. 18 inches really is the sweet spot for the size of this ship. It's not too small, not too big. You can put it on a desk, you can put it on a bookshelf, and it gives you some size to make a good model kit. Uh, but wonderful views here, a glue together assembly, smooth saucer surface, a domed base is included. Um, and it's just some nice pictures there. Here's a shot of the decals. Across the top, you have that wonderful vintage look for the model kit with Spock, with Kirk, with the name of the ship. Down here on the bottom, you can see once again, these features are called out in those kind of loud 1960s, 1970s kind of comic book type pictures. And that's accurate to the way these model kit boxes used to be. You get a shot of the USS Enterprise, the Klingon battle cruiser, and just very well done box art as you would expect from round two. So let's take a moment and let's look at some of these classic parts. Now this first part, uh, this is a sprue that has the nacelles. The nacelles are connected directly to the pylons. Um, so that, that takes away one point of failure on here. Uh, there's still a chance your nacelles can end up kind of drooping. Uh, they're not as well engineered as they were on the later two kits. 
Um, and really this model kit, it's just gonna be lacking a little bit of the detail included on the other kits. Uh, but that's the sprue that has them in the cells. Of course, you get two of those. And here's what we'll look at a little bit that's just not quite as accurate. Here's kind of the three tabs that are on the bottom of the Bissard end caps. And you can see they're blocky. They don't really have much distinction. They give you the kind of the shapes, but they're not nearly as well done as what was done on the later kits. Uh, you get a sprue with the deflector housing, the deflector, uh, the shuttle bay door, the opaque caps for the nacelles. So no real chance to light this unless you're doing aftermarket parts. And you also get the old stand. Uh, so if you want that classic kind of cradle, A-frame style stand, you can build that together. Uh, you have a sprue with three parts that make up the hull and the neck. It is nice that the neck is attached and the plastic is very nice. Now, one thing to note is along the neck and along the hull of the ship, there are raised squares for the windows. Now, when they make the decals for this ship, they make the decals accurate and they don't follow the inaccurate window placements that are on the hull. So if you want to decal this and do it right, you want to sand off those raised windows so your decals can lay flat and accurately. And of course, the last parts of the model are the top and the bottom of the saucer. Now, one thing that's nice about round two's release of this is that they have taken care of the inaccurate grid line that was on top of the saucer. That's been removed, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you do look at it, you can see that top superstructure, the BC deck. It's not really teardrop shaped. It's kind of an egg shaped, and that's not accurate. The bridge itself is not accurate. Uh, you do get two clear parts, and those two clear parts are for the top of the bridge and the sensor dome on the bottom of the ship. Uh, those are the only clear parts you have, and they won't really help you light the ship at all uh, because it's still opaque on the top and bottom of the saucer where those would attach. Uh, really very nice decal sheet. Uh, the red is a little bit of a brick red, not a bright red primary. The decals on here um, simulate the accurate windows where some are black, some are red, some are white. Uh, and it looks like that's the only window option on this decal sheet. So you get the accurate windows. Uh, you do on this release only get one uh, choice for naming your ship. You can only name it the USS Enterprise, NCC 1701. Uh, so no additional ship names on this release. But still you'll be able to make the classic Star Trek USS Enterprise. And of course, if you want your ship to be a little bit more modern, fit in with your display, uh, they do give you a dome base that Round 2 usually includes in their model kits. All right, so that is my out-of-packaging review for the Star Trek USS Enterprise Starship model kit. And I am going to build this model up. I'm not going to do add-on parts. I'm not going to light it. That's something to do with the 1 350th scale Enterprise, which I honestly still have to finish. Um, but I'm going to build this up. I'm going to try and paint it well. I'm going to try and fix seams. I'm not going to add any parts to it to make it more accurate. I'm going to build it as it was then. I'm just going to try and do a good job with it. So that'll be coming up on the channel. We're also going to be building the Enterprise C on the channel in the next few days. And we should have an unboxing video of that release done in the next day or so. And thank you guys for following the channel. Thank you to Round 2 and AMT for letting me take a look at these review copies and letting me build them up for the channel. Hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of what this model kit's about. Uh, thank you for following the channel. Make sure to check out AllScaleTrek.com, wonderful Star Trek modeling forums. This ship has been on those forums for years. You can really see some incredible builds of the Star Trek USS Enterprise Starship model kit on that forum. Thank you guys very much, and I'll be back with you soon.